You open your eyes and all that you can see is complete darkness. You seem to be in a room, a completely blacked out room. You turn your eyes one way, then the other, and nothing, complete ink black darkness. In this completely dark room you cannot move easily, it almost feels like you have no limbs at all. But if you could, you are quite certain that you would not even be able to see your hands before your eyes. The entire room is pitch black. So, you instinctually do the most logical thing left to you, which is to try to hear something. But you cannot hear anything, and it is somehow even worse than this. It is like there is no sound at all and the only thing that you can hear is this buzzing or ringing, like that ringing in your ears that you can hear sometimes when it is completely silent, when there is absolutely no sound of any kind. And you think that this utter silence will drive you mad, it is driving you mad now, and that ringing, that ringing in your ears. But then you forget, and perhaps you dream, and then you remember where you are again, which is nowhere. You are in a black on black room. It is a room without walls, but the walls are still there. They are the walls of your perception. All your external senses have been turned off. Moreover, you cannot feel anything, and it seems like you are floating, like gravity has been turned off. You are in a literal void. It is what you would imagine existence would be like at the center of some giant black hole somewhere, out there in cold space. You seem to be floating in lukewarm black space. This feeling is both liberating and relaxing in a certain way, but if it were to continue too long, it could easily become a kind of claustrophobic terror. If you have ever spent any time in an isolation tank, then you may be familiar with this feeling. This is the feeling of complete sensory deprivation, at least as complete as it can be, using purely mechanical means. Interestingly, research into certain facets of sensory deprivation is not an easy task it's hard to find certain information. It could be that there is just not that much interest in this obscure topic, but it may also be the case that some of this lack of information is because many high-level organizations have taken an interest in such devices, and some experimentation into these areas may have had some rather nefarious goals. The modern version of such complete sensory deprivation is the sensory deprivation tank, which was created by Dr. John Lilly in 1954. This complete sensory deprivation chamber, which would later be known as a flotation tank, would completely change the field of personal awareness and would allow for the scientific experimentation into incredible new facets of the human condition. But what is the big deal? What does it mean to turn off all your external senses? And why do it? Well, to answer this simply, we could refer to the floating man argument that was proposed by the medieval philosopher Ibn Sina. His thought experiment proposed the idea of a man floating in a void, just like the one I have described above, one where this person is not able to perceive anything physically, where they are not even able to touch their body, wiggle their toes, let alone see, hear, taste, or smell anything. In such a thought experiment, it is then proposed that this person might later reflect on what has just happened to him, and doing so they may conclude that in such an environment, in such a state of total sensory deprivation, they were able to realize that they were something, that there is something beneath the body. In removing the body and all of its perceptions, such a person might still find that there is something to them still, something beyond the body, and some might call that something the soul. Such an experience might allow them to directly perceive the difference, the duality, between the body and the soul. This is the direct perception of what in Cartesian philosophy would later become, the duality between the body and the mind. But this is only a mere scratch of the surface of what is possible when such complete sensory deprivation becomes achievable. And as I have mentioned, some of the past and perhaps even current experiments done in this area using sensory deprivation chambers may help to bridge the incredible gaps in human consciousness. Such experiments may be able to perhaps even answer such questions as, what is the extent of human awareness and ability? Do humans have more sensual possibilities than just the physical senses? Could it be that we can use senses that are beyond, certainly far more powerful, than just the physical senses that we take so for granted during our physical life? And are there other worlds, other dimensions possible for us? Such experiments might even be able to show us how to begin to access other worlds, other dimensions, 
and in those worlds perhaps discover a new kind of life, a new kind of existence, in realities undreamt of. Such work, if rigorously undertaken in all seriousness, has the possibility to solve the riddle of other dimensions, and even the possibility of traveling to those fantastic places. Could this kind of experimentation have already begun? Quite simply, yes it has. And in trying to prove the legitimacy of this, I would have you ponder the reason why it is so hard to find any concrete data on what has been done thus far. A simple question like, what is the longest that any person has been able to stay inside such a complete isolation chamber, is very difficult to answer. And yet, there must have been experimentation in this area. But why no easily accessible data in the public sphere? This lack of information, of hardly any data on conclusive research by legitimate scientific bodies on the use of sensory deprivation chambers, should at the very least raise some questions within you. And certainly, you can be sure that such experimentation into isolation chamber endurance, combining pharmaceuticals and endurance sessions in such chambers, has and is being done. At most, in your research, you might find some information saying that Dr. John Lilly himself may have spent days in an isolation tank, hooked up to an intravenous unit, but aside from this there is very little out there. So where is all the data? And what does the little that we know on this tell us about the kind of work that was being done, and the kind of work that might still be going on? What I can tell you, through my own experience as an inner alchemist, is that an average person without training can only withstand such complete sensory deprivation for only so long. Eventually such a person will begin to lose their self-identity. And that might be something that you should consider carefully, especially if we contemplate the possibility that such techniques might be used today by less than scrupulous individuals. But why is it that people can only handle so much sensory deprivation? Well, the reason for this is that so much of what we are is dependent on our external physical perceptions. The person that you are right now is not something born in isolation, but it is instead in many ways a reflection of the environment you perceive to be out there in accordance with your physical senses. We are what we remember ourselves to be, and if you think about the nature of memory, and how much of it relates and is reliant on external stimulus to maintain a kind of cohesive feeling of existence, of being alive as the particular person that you imagine and perceive yourself to be, then you can begin to understand just how intertwined you are to your environment. If I were to go to the kitchen and make myself something to eat, for example, I would imagine that I would be able to follow some simple recipe without problem, but it is incredibly surprising how much I might forget. I may make some wonderful culinary concoction, but it is quite possible that I will forget to put in salt in my masterpiece or some other spice. Why did I forget? Most likely because I did not see the salt, I did not pay attention to it. Our memory is cued to our physical experience, most often to our visual sense. We tend to remember to do things, not because we have laid our plans perfectly in some kind of software program in our minds, like a computer, but because we rely on our physical senses to perceive things, and then to remember to do those things that are related to those perceptions. Our memory is directly tied to our physical perception. If we are smart, therefore, we may make sure that we have a written recipe, which is a visual written record of what we need to do in sequence. Without that recipe, we may often make mistakes, forgetting one thing or another. Even our memory cues, which are different tricks you might say, to try to remember a great deal of data, are usually based on some kind of visual cue, where we peg one particular thing to another, usually a striking visual image, and in that way we are able to remember thanks to our ability to not recall hard data on its own. But by being able to peg that data to certain very striking visual cues and then remembering a sequence thanks to that. In other words, our memories are completely tied to our perceptions, and for the average person such perceptions are most often only physical ones, our physical senses. So, without our physical senses, and without training, we forget, and in time we may even forget ourselves, at least the nature of who we are, our personality, and this can bring about a kind of insanity. If we forget ourselves, if we forget everything, then we become that floating man in the thought experiment referred to above. We may lose all sense of who we are, only knowing that we exist but nothing more. Under such duress, 
and I must call it duress for the average person, because in time without that symbiotic relationship between that existence and the outer physical environment, the structure of our self begins to experience a kind of identity onslaught. In time, lost in such a deprivation chamber, the self becomes unhinged in certain ways, unable to know itself because it cannot identify and remember itself. And its only option, then becomes, to try to now maintain its fragile identity in this new environment, an environment where it can no longer rely on the symbiosis between itself and the stable physical world. And use mental muscles that are not able to create stable structures within the mind, means that the mind is in a constant state of flow, never finding rest. And incredibly, such a total lack of physical stimulus will in time open up new worlds, access to new dimensions, so that this fragile self must now contend with alien environments, dream positions, where wholly new realities must be contended with. Pushed into such an environment without training, a personality may be fractured. In the best of terms, such reawakening into a totally new internal environment may allow someone to begin to explore new dimensions and worlds beyond anything imaginable. But these must be controlled in short explorations at first, until the mind becomes powerful enough to withstand these experiences. The use of the sensory deprivation tank can become a key to future human evolution and the starting place for a new kind of mind science. Taken seriously by a wider body of researchers, this relatively simple technology, if used properly, can allow us to break the bonds that bind us to this limited reality we call physical existence. This, of course, is an ancient technology, and one that has been used by inner alchemists for thousands of years to break the walls of perception. But unlike the modern world that has become so reliant on external contraptions, they have developed and used techniques that do not rely on any external paraphernalia. Using such techniques, inner alchemists can break the limits that bind them to physicality, and in time may even move not just mentally but wholly, completely body and soul, into entirely different other worlds. But such a process must be done slowly, in a step-by-step -step fashion, so that a practitioner is able to grow in power slowly over time and in that way dive deeper and deeper into the dark oceans of perception. In this way, they begin to recreate themselves from the ground up in an environment where the physical senses, where all physical experience has been completely left behind. Such adepts not only discover the true nature of their being, but also begin to fortify their true self, a self hidden from most, and one that I have referred to as the ghost in the machine. I would encourage you to do your own research into sensory deprivation. You may find such research exasperating because of the lack of information, but any material that you can dig up may just open up your eyes to how seriously certain groups are taking this research. And it is my hope that through such a revelation, you can begin to truly realize just how powerful human beings actually are, how powerful you are as an individual. There are hidden secrets to be found out there to be sure, and this is one of the big ones. Research in this field by what can be termed very powerful and legitimate sources is and will reveal not only the true nature of our existence, but our ability to truly go beyond this world and into vast other places, alien realities. And incredibly, the nature of this work will reveal to you that true exploration for us will not come about on board some steel rocket as we are slowly pulled away from the gravity of the earth, but that it will come through a new science of the mind. A new science, might I add, that is no longer in its infancy. But you do not need to rely on hidden secrets and hard-to-find information to begin your own quest into realms beyond the physical senses. As an inner alchemist myself, I can tell you that you can begin your own adventures without any of the contraptions and the technology that the modern world is so reliant upon. You can learn to slowly gain your power using techniques that are as old as time. These techniques can allow you to break the bonds of physicality better than any of the modern methods used by such scientists. If you are interested, you can easily begin to incorporate inner alchemy techniques that are safe and provide a step-by-step -step procedural system to allow you to do the impossible. I have described these techniques in detail in the books, The Way of the Projectionist, and Out-of-Body Experiences Quickly and Naturally. In those books, you will find everything that you need to move safely into spaces beyond any physical cage. There is a vast universe out there. You can learn to regain the great power within you.
I will leave a link to these books in the video description, and I would highly recommend them to anyone interested in trying to move beyond physical limitation.